Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over how to mix insulin. What I'm going to do for you is that I'm going to actually show you how to draw up insulin whenever you're mixing it. But first let me go over the most important concepts that you need to know whenever performing this nursing skill. So what is the purpose of mixing insulin? Well the purpose is, is that it helps prevent from having to give the patient two injections because a lot of times physicians will order two different types of insulins and you can just mix them in the syringe and give them one injection so it is better for the patient now in this video what i want to be going over are the most commonly ordered insulins that you mix which generally are nph which is an intermediate insulin and regular insulin which is a short acting insulin now before we get started let's go over these key concepts that you need to remember. Number one, never mix Lantus, which is a long acting insulin, with any other type of insulin. It's to go all by itself, so you will never mix it with anything. Number two, after drawing up the insulin into your syringe, administer the dose within five to 15 minutes because regular insulin binds to MPH and it will decrease its action. Number three, before administering insulin, always check the patient for signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. So you want to look at the patient, you want to ask them how they're feeling because typical signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia is that the patient's sweaty, clammy, tachycardic, confused. And a lot of times patients will know, they'll say, my blood sugar feels low, can you check it? Because they know their body a lot better than we do. And the reason you want to check their blood sugar, ask them, assess them for signs of hypoglycemia before you give insulin, because the way that insulin works is that it will take the sugar that's in the body and transport it into the cell. So it'll deplete the system of glucose. So if you're giving them more when it's already depleted, you're going to cause some really bad problems. And then check their, glu their glucose, depending on your hospital guidelines, whatever their glucometer readings, um, whatever is considered hypo and hyperglycemia, check for that. But generally anything less than 70. And if that happens, what you would want to do is that you would want to hold that dose and notify the doctor immediately and ask what the further orders would be. Another important concept, if you don't get anything out of this whole video with um, how to mix insulin, this is important. Okay, how you draw up the insulin. You're gonna have a cloudy solution, which is your NPH, the intermediate, and you're gonna have a clear solution, which is the regular acting insulin. So whenever you look at your vials, that's what it's gonna look like. Now you're gonna draw up in this order, clear to cloudy. The clear again is regular insulin, and the cloudy is NPH, the intermediate acting insulin. Now, to help you remember this, because a lot of people get this confused, try to remember the mnemonic RN, registered nurse. R for regular and N for NPH, so that's how you're going to draw up. Why do you do this? What's the purpose of drawing it up like this? Well, it prevents contaminating the cloudy insulin, which is the intermediate insulin, with clear insulin, which is the regular insulin. Now, if that happened, it would decrease, it would affect the action of how that NPH insulin would work. So you don't want to contaminate the cloudy with the clear. So that's why we draw it up that way. Now I'm gonna show you how to actually mix insulin. Now this is just an example. Always follow your hospital protocols, your doctor's orders, because procedures and medications do change over time. Okay, the very first thing you wanna do is you want to check your physician's order to confirm how much insulin you're actually giving. And our doctor's order says administer 10 units of Humulin R and then 12 units of Humulin N sub Q before breakfast daily. After you confirm that, you want to make sure you have the right medications. So you're gonna take your vial and you're going to look and read what's on the vial. Here we have Humulin R, and you can tell because it's a clear solution. And then we have our other vial, which is Humulin N, and you can tell because it is cloudy. And you need to ask yourself, how many, ins how many total units of insulin am I gonna be giving? Um, 10 units of Humulin R and 12 units of Humulin N, so that equals 22 units total. Then you want to make sure you know the peak times, be familiar with the peak times of each of these insulins. I have a video of mnemonics that can help you remember the peak times of this. A card should be popping up and you can access that. So let's go over it real fast. The peak of Humulin R is two hours and the peak of Humulin N is 
eight hours. And this is when the patient is at most risk for hypoglycemia. NCLEX likes to ask about that, so make sure you know that. Then next, what we're gonna do is we're going to perform hand hygiene, clean our hands, and we're gonna put on some gloves. Then after we put on our gloves, we are going to take our cloudy insulin because this is a cloudy solution. It's their NPH, the intermediate insulin, and we need to mix these ingredients because they like to settle. So to do that, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna roll the insulin gently in between the palms of your hands and just roll it and get it mixed up because if you don't do this, it'll alter how much NPH you're actually drawing up. So you wanna make sure the solution is good mixed and never shake it because that causes air bubbles and that can throw off how much NPH you will actually draw up. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our alcohol prep and we are gonna clean the tops of these vials to make sure we're getting rid of germs. So we're just gonna clean for about five to 10 seconds, really good, each vial. And then we're gonna to go to the next file and just clean that. And now we are ready to use our syringe. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take the cap off of your syringe and we are going, remember, remember the mnemonic RN, we're gonna start with regular insulin and then go to cloudy. So it's gonna go clear to cloudy, regular to MPH. So we are going to inject 12 units of air in our Humulin N insulin. So just pull back on your syringe to 12 units, which is there. We're gonna inject the 12 units of air into the vial. Then we're gonna remove our syringe and we're going to inject 10 units of air into the Humulin R. So we're gonna pull back on the plunger to 10 units and we're going to do the same thing, but we're not going to remove our syringe. Instead, we're gonna take the bottle and flip it upside down, and we are going to remove 10 units of regular insulin. And you watch on your syringe where 10 units is, and make sure it's precise. And once you have that 10 units, you're going to remove the vial. And then we're gonna to go to our Humulin because that was the clear, now we're going to cloudy. And we're going to remove a total of 22 units for the whole total dose. So, we're going to go into our NPH and we're going to remove a total of 22 units. And that will equal how much where to give. Now, after you draw it up, if you're not gonna give it immediately, what you wanna to do to prevent contamination, sticking yourself or sticking someone else is to do the one hand scoop technique. So just take it and take the cap and just scoop it up. And then you are ready to go. Okay, so that is how you mix insulin. Now be sure to check out my NCLEX review on diabetes and check out my ner other nursing skill videos. And thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.